Hey, this is Jamie from Caps Computers, and today we are reviewing Fade to Silence. This title from Black Forest Games and THQ Nordic is available now for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows PC. At the time of the recording of this video, the game costs $39.99 US or $59.95 Australian. Endless winter has fallen on Earth. Eldritch horrors now prowl the wilderness. You are Ash, a man battling his own internal Eldritch horror while trying to create a safe haven for his daughter. To do so, Ash will need to venture out into the wilderness to scavenge supplies, rescue survivors, and battle against the horrors. Fate to Silence is a roguelite survival game, so storytelling is minimalist. Players will learn about the world from exploring, chatting with survivors, and listening to the eldritch horror and dreaming during rest breaks. The writing is generally ham-fisted, awkward, and at times cringe-inducing. The interactions with survivors are too occasional to develop any serious attachment to them, the eldritch horrors that pester Ash is maddening for all the wrong reasons, as it is repetitive and annoying instead of creepy. At best, the story is context for the game, at worst, it's a nuisance. Fade to Silence mixes elements of Dark Souls-type action, survival, and roguelite gameplay. Ash's actions are restricted by his stamina bars, so players need to choose their actions wisely in combat. Resources do not respawn, so healing items are limited. Dodging, parrying, and blocking is a must for long-term success. The combat system is solid, attacks are well telegraphed leaving much to player skill. There are a few hitches where Ash may get stuck on something in the environment, but it's not a common occurrence. The game offers two difficulties, explorer mode has unlimited lives, more resources, better followers, and is generally more forgiving. The main mode is not, resources and respawns are limited so players will need to plan ahead of time what they will craft to get themselves out of the gate and moving forward. Surviving outside of the settlement is tough, staying warm is a constant challenge, especially when blizzards drive the temperatures and drop the visibility down to zero. Fate to Silence is not the type of game where players will master on their first playthrough. It's a game of trial and error to find out the most efficient way through the tech tree and the map. Being a roguelite, permanent death does not wipe all progress. Players are able to purchase boons for the next playthrough with items collected from major story events and clearing strongholds. The boons range from bonus starting resources to saved buildings and equipment. Additionally, Ash becomes stronger and more resilient each playthrough by collecting certain items. They are a huge time saver and create some feeling of progression between attempts. Getting into Fade to Silence can be difficult. The tutorials is bare bones with players only taught the basics of combats and gathering before sent out into the world. There are slightly more detailed instructions in the survival guide, but better tooltips would have been appreciated. The pace of the game is very slow. Ash has a slow plodding foot speed and limited stamina for sprinting. Unlocking the dog sled and wolves will speed up the pace by a bit, but I find the dog sled controls to be clumsy. The hassle of moving to the dog sled into place, hopping on, traveling, and hopping off barely outweighs the walking on your own two feet sometimes. Additionally, players will need to stick to the path or they'll be in for a bumpy ride and risk flipping the sled. Navigating is particularly brutal because there is no GPS type arrows, so players will need to squint through the snow to find the path and constantly pull up the map to figure out where to go. Early playthroughs are brutal until the sled is unlocked and the ability to retain the sled between playthroughs is purchased. The slow walking pace and the large distances between points of interest means players will spend quite a bit of time just staring at the wintry environment. Fade to Silence is a real grind due to the repeated playthroughs, the poor tutorials, the slow movement speeds, and the missing quality of life features. Base building is a time and resource expensive process, but buildings can be moved once built. The buildings that are retained between playthroughs appear to stay in the same place, so players will need to destroy perfectly good buildings. Starting new games will take players through the initial tutorial each time instead of providing the option to skip through. The controls in Fade to Silence is rough. The game is built with consoles in mind as controllers feel more natural. The menus are radial and designed for thumbsticks. Item management and crafting feels messy and unintuitive. The options for PC users are also limited. Basics like toggle to aim or sprint is missing. Several menu keys are hard-coded, so those who don't use WASD or QWERTY keyboards may have trouble. The visuals are a mixed bag. Fate to Silence's environments are nice. A lot of time has clearly been spent to create the winter wasteland where nature and eldritch horrors battle to reclaim the remains of humanity. The enemy character design is good. The eldritch horrors look alien, serving as a foil to the natural environment. On the other hand, the character models are rather clunky and awkward looking. The audio experience is rough. The sound effects are probably the best of the bunch. A lot of attention has been paid to the sound of the footsteps treading across a variety of winter terrain. The sound effect alerts for low hunger, health, 
and cold are played way too often. Replacing half of the sound effect cues with visual cues would provide the same effect and be less annoying. The music itself is decent, mostly excelling at creepy horror-style music to build tension. The biggest issue lies in the inappropriate or overuse of tension-setting music. The squeaky strings kick in randomly for no apparent reason, making the music ineffective when the tension should be built up. The voice acting is also poor. Ash's voice actor is barely passable and everyone else falls behind that. The player is supposed to develop a fatherly bond with Ash's daughter, but her voice actor is bad enough for me to desire as little contact with her as possible. The premise of a hardcore roguelite survival game is an attractive one. Unfortunately, Fate to Silence struggles with lousy writing, bad pacing, poor quality of life decisions, and a clunky feeling that never goes away. I can see a very small niche of gamers who are willing to put up with the game's quirks in exchange for a tough game combining Dark Souls type combat and survival gameplay. On the other hand, most gamers can avoid the game's clumsy execution and never feel like they've missed out on life. I'm awarding Fate to Silence 6 capsules out of 10. If you want to read this review, be sure to check out the link in the description or in the video's card. I hope to see you soon. This is Jamie from Capsule Computers signing off. Hey YouTube, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe to Capsule Computers for more awesome videos. If you're looking for more videos to watch, check out our review of World War Z here on the left. If you're looking for another survival game to play, check out our review of Generation Zero here on the right.